Hey, good morning. It's Sabine. It is May 18, Amsterdam, Holland. And this is the article I had published at the time of the coronation of now King Charles, uh, when I was banned from YouTube from making videos. So you may have picked up the article from the blog, um, but I'm going to quickly go through it uh, because then I'm going to address the new article I published yesterday. So in this article, you're going to find how the British royalty, part of the satanic elite, tried to mirror what was happening in Westminster Abbey with the crowning of their king, um, because it directly matched what the heavens were speaking about. So this is Boodis, the harvester, with what is now called Canis Veditici, two hunting dogs, and the hairpiece of Bernice, so the constellation Coma Bernices, and Canis Venetici. That is actually uh, a cover-up of the original of the constellation of the mother with the man-child standing on her lap. And we're going to see the original later. But what they associate themselves with are these two hunting dogs, the brightest stars in Canis Venetici, Corcaroli, and Cara, the heart of the king, and the beloved, are tied to King Charles because his predecessor, Charles I, his name is connected to this star, the heart of the king. You can read about that in the article. And at the time when they entered Westminster Abbey, the two-towered reflection of uh, the constellation Gemini, this star sign was directly overhead. So the crowning of Charles was directly connected to them trying to bring forth their man-child company. And of course, there was a lot of ritual and symbolism involved with open and uh, covert meaning, the Grim Reaper, the oil ritual, and a lot of uh, brethren have already spoken about that. I believe it's also the formal end of Babylon, the 70 years prophesied by Daniel 9.24 with the official handing over of the orb and the scepter and the ushering in of their new dawn, the closing of their preparation stage toward the beast system being ushered in, and now them looking forward to their new dawn. And the princes they're going to bring forth as a man-child company. In the venue of the church, we can see this picture of them bringing forth their leadership from the nations onto the harvest field and then into the throne room. And that is a follow-up of what the queen prepared when she alluded to the bear judgment of Russia uh, toward not just spiritual Babylon, but also the UK, uh, Ephraim, US, and Manasseh, the UK, um, you can find that in Jeremiah 50 and 51, but also in Isaiah 23, when it speaks of the judgment upon Tarshish, the UK, and spiritual Babylon. So the references in the scripture are found in the article as well. So when the uh, celebrations of the, jubilee, of the Jubilee of the Queen were uh, being concluded with them bringing forth their new uh, princes and sonship with Charles and William as their new Adam. The crowd cheered in agreement to the queen announcing that they would soon be rocked, not just celestial judgment, but nukes too. And this is usually how they go about through mind control and witchcraft. They solicit the passive and uh, active responses by people to come to agreement with them so they can further their agenda. And this is what they did during this coronation as well, by soliciting allegiance from their citizens worldwide to uh, pay allegiance to the new king, in addition to their collection of what they called all kinds of people of quote-unquote faith to formally align with and submit to his kingship. So what you can see in this venue of Westminster Abbey is them entering into the uh, 
inner sanctum of their church through the or over the blue carpet, the uh, symbol of the sea of the nations onto the golden harvest fields and then into a representation of the celestial throne room. And we can see the same uh, color coding in the flag of the Ukraine, which I believe is the scriptural representation of the Valley of Jehoshaphat, and that conflict will soon be up-leveled to a global scale and go nuclear. So as they progress through the door, which uh, looks like if you go, if you watch through the uh, through your eyelashes, it looks like an angelic structure. The blue carpet of the nations onto the golden harvest fields, onto what is called the Kasmati pavement, and there are links in the article which lead to the understanding that that is a representation of the heavenly throne room, of the uh, center of what they consider the universe, the, where the royal seat, the throne, is put amidst 24 elders. And we see that reflection in the heavens in the constellation Pegasus. They reenacted the wedding of William, William and Kate exactly on this spot, too, and the Kasmati pavement was restored for that wedding. So they were acting out how they bring forth their bee system from the nations onto their harvest field and then into the, their understanding of the throne room. So at the time of the uh, entry and the crowning, this heart of the king, Corcoroli, was uh, center stage. So the meridian line of the highest uh, daily point or the culmination of that constellation where the mother and the man-child are hidden, we're going to see that, was exactly at culmination at the time of the crowning. So was the moon at the altar of redemption in Libra underneath Corona Borealis, the name giver of the coronavirus. So the serpent is slithering underneath, seizing to obtain that crown, the northern crown, which we are instructed to hold fast to. So the combination of the crowning with uh, the picture of redemption we find on the four-cornered altar of redemption, Libra, was what they sought to hijack by their offer of false redemption under an earthly king with a very darkened heart. So there's a lot of information in the article about the ritual, but this is the picture I would love for you to keep in your heart because this is the original depiction of that constellation. This is where Boodis is found, and this is now plastered over by these two hunting dogs in a hairpiece of a Roman pagan understanding of Coma Bernices. But this is the original meaning of that constellation. It is the mother seated with the young man-child standing on her lap, and it's a depiction of the Lord at about the age when the man-child uh, visited him. So it is a young male child. Revelation 12.5a speaks of the man-child, the Chios, and then of another child, the child or Technon. Um, but we know that the Lord is going to bring forth his man-child company shortly. So what the satanic elite were trying to portray, as I understand it, is how they seek to bring forth their princes uh, to lead the beast system and for people to voluntarily pay allegiance, and ultimately submit to and completely connect themselves with not just the beast system, but the princes they bring forth. And that, of course, is directly opposed to what the Bible instructs us to do. And in addition to piercing through what they are doing, I believe we have the privilege of bringing forth what the biblical original of that heavenly speech, what it actually means. So our spiritual mother, Jerusalem, is going to bring forth her harvesters, her end times harvesters, uh, and they are going to express the heart of the king 
And they are the type of the beloved, just like David manifested in his days. So the uh, references to what the celestial signs uh, mean in the scriptures and the patterns of Corcaroli, how that is connected to Charles and his predecessor, are found over here, if you're so led. And the venue of London, this is the Corona uh, ornament on top of the Fire of London monument. And on the ground plan that is found over here, and that is the heart of the brightest star of the constellation Canis Major, um, which is now considered the big dog constellation, but biblically that is a hawk constellation. And this is, this is the brightest star in the firmament, the Revelation 22 bright morning star that the Lord promises to us because it is himself as the Prince of Peace. So the greater venue of this ritual is designed to mimic the constellation Sirius. So to me, it serves as an affirmation that they were indeed bringing forth their new dawn, their new age, and their princes to lead uh, and be part of that B system structure. So let's quickly go back to the biblical original. This is the article I published yesterday, and it's entitled Face to Face. And I believe we are going to have a face-to-face -face encounter with our Lord um, in alignment with what I see in the heavens because this weekend we see the sun drawing nigh to the constellation, the, uh, to the star cluster of the Pleiades in the backdrop of the constellation Taurus. So Taurus speaks of the Lord coming both in judgment pertaining to the wayward and the lost and those who are rebellious or even wicked toward him and his followers and the rescue of his beloved and the innocent. So the backdrop of Taurus has a double meaning. And then this specific location of the Pleiades cluster, that is the representation of the seven churches uh, in scripture, the seven candlesticks or the seven lampstands that are spoken of in the first chapters of the book of Revelation. And John speaks of him seeing the Lord standing amidst these seven lampstands or candlesticks. And we know that uh, the main reflection of the Lord as a bridegroom is the sun itself. And the sun is going to stand in the midst of the seven lampstands on May 21st. We're going to see that the conjunction of the sun with the Pleiades will play out in the heavens uh, this weekend. And I'm not going to speculate about a rapture date. What I'm going to do is to present all the data, the underlying information in the scripture um, and in the heavens as I understand it. And I trust that the Holy Spirit will lead each of, each of us to understand what that means to us in our own lives. So here we see the backdrop of the Pleiades, the bright blue stars, the purified flames and the refined light veiled in these beautiful noctilent uh, clouds and the flock of doves because the Pleiades are also associated with the type of the dove in scripture. Uh, in Noah's time, there was a messenger. Uh, remember that Leah had, uh, or Leah had dove's eyes. And then, of course, the Song of Solomon, which speaks of the transition of the season of the winter into spring, flowers appearing on the earth, and the Lord speaking to his beloved to come forth and speak. He wants to hear and he wants to see her. So, while we have seen many spring markers come and go, spring equinox, the equinox, we've seen flowers appearing all over the earth. The celestial marker of the hinge point in between winter and spring is yet to come. That is the conjunction of the sun with the Pleiades. That is the ancient marker of the closing of the winter doors and the opening of the doors of spring toward summer. So I hope to see you in the next video where we're going to dive in to the story of the 
Pleiades and how that speaks to us.